Hey basketball coaches and basketball players, my name is Alan from Al's Basketball Training and today I'm going to give you the most common basketball offensive sets that you can run and that you'll probably see in game. Let's get down to the clipboard, let's check out these basketball offenses. Basically what I'm going to go over today is why you would use these specific offensive sets and also some of the plays that you can run off of those sets. If first, if you like basketball plays, drills, and skills, hit that like button and subscribe. Let's get down to the clipboard. Let's check these out. Okay, so the first offensive set is the 5 out. This is probably the easiest set you'll probably ever see, but also it's probably the first one that players will probably learn. At least the players that I coach, if I'm coaching a younger team, you're, they're going to be learning this one first. Now the reason behind it is it's great against pretty well any defense, whether it be man-to-man -man or zone defenses. And what you're going to see here is five players outside of the three-point line. So what you can do, some simple plays like a pass and screen away, or a pass and screen four, or a pass and cut. Now, if you're wondering what these lines mean really quickly, is this is a screen, a dotted line is a pass, and a solid line is when a player moves. Those are three basics, again, for this video. So a pass and cut is when player one cuts towards the rim and it's almost like a give and go where you pass the ball away and player two passes down to player one for a layup. Of course this works really well if player one's defender is slower than him or if player one gets the ball and let's say for example player four's defender pops down and plays what's called help defense player one can kick the ball out for a three-point shot or maybe a deep mid-range shot. Now a pass and screen away is when player one passes and screens away to the opposite side. Player three comes, fills that spot. Player two passes, player one three the ball and could shoot. Or player two could then screen away as well and open up player four for a shot. There's a whole bunch of different options. Or you can pass and screen four, which would then be a screen and roll. And player 2 would fill that spot and player 3 would pop out if player 3 was not open for the layup. There's some simple plays for the 5 out, but there's even more coming up next. The next one is the 4 out and 1 in. Now this will look just like so. Well, we'll have the point guard up top. And so we're going to have 4 players out and 1 player in. In these plays, what you're going to be trying to do here is maybe set up the next offense, which is a triangle offense. Now, this is a triangle because there's a triangle here, and the triangle offense is a little bit more advanced. I have a motion that I like to run off of it, but there's a whole bunch of set plays like the pinch post that I'm going to be explaining in a few days, but I've explained briefly on this channel before. And... With the 4-out offense, if we go back to the 4-out, this offense could be ran against a zone defense, but generally speaking, you will see this one being ran against a man-to-man. -man. So we can have plays like this where player 1 passes over to player 4, player 5 is going to pop up and set a back, what's called a back screen or a screen for player 1. Player 1 is going to then cut towards the rim and may be open for a layup. And then another option is if player 1 is not open, if you wanted to kind of turn this into a kind of a, a weak motion offense, after that back screen, player 5 can then screen away for player 2. Player 2 runs over and fills the spot where player 1 was. Player 1 is going to then continue through. Player 5 is going to be rolling off of that screen. Player 3 is going to be filling up. Player 1 is going to be filling out. And now Player 4 has two different options. He can pass to Player 5 for the layup, or Player 2 to set up another 4-out offense, or to take that shot. Now, considering that I was just mentioning the triangle offense, I might as well break down a play that you'll see here. Tri 
generally speaking, the triangle offense is not going to be ran until you see the high school age more than likely. Maybe some grade 7 and 8 teams will be running this, but some simple plays that you'll see coming out of it is player 4 passing over to player 1, player 5 moving up and setting a back screen on player 4 who's going to be then cutting towards the rim, and this may be an open layup for player 4. If it is not, player 4 is going to then continue through and now we're going to be having player 5 set that screen for player 1 who's going to be using that screen and could pull up for a shot or hit player 5 rolling off of that screen for a layup. Now those are pretty well all really good against man-to-man -man defenses, except the 5 out is good for everything. This next play is going to be specifically really great for zone defenses. So if you're going up against a 2-3 zone or a 3-2 zone, definitely this is the offensive set that you're probably going to want to run. Now, a simple play in the 3-out, 2-in, basically a 3-out, 2-in is when you've got 3 players on the outside and 2 players on the inside of the 3-point line. And with this one, you could set a very simple motion offense where you could have player 1 pass over to player 3, player 5 moves up towards that high post, and player 1 screens away for player 2, and player 2 fills this spot, so now you've got player 3 having two options, player 2 and player 5. The idea why you would want to get player 5 the ball in the high post is because in a zone defense, let's say for example a 2-3 zone defense, what you're going to be having by getting the ball into the high post is that's going to be against a 2-3 having player 5 being forced up to guard player 5 because if player 2 tries to guard player 5 he's going to be reaching in a lot so that's going to be pulling player 5 up now if player 4 down low is able to box out or create space for himself down in the low post player 5 could do what's called a high to low pass and get player 4 an easy basket. So this is why you would run this play. Another version of it is when player, let's get these play, these defensive players back to where they were, we have player 2 pass over to player 3 and he can cut through very similar to the triangle offense I just showed you, but we're going to have player 5 coming up towards the high post. So that's going to shift the defense like this. Again, we have the high post open because in a 2-3 zone, player 1 is going to be guarding that area, player 2 is going to be guarding this area, and in a zone defense, you're not guarding an individual man, you're guarding an area of the court. And any of these double team locations are double team locations. So, you can use that to your advantage by attacking those gaps, but... In a 3-out, 2-in offense, you can see that we're still 3-out and 2-in. We can pass to the high post, which brings up player 5, brings down player 3. Now, if player 3 is a pretty good defender and he's guarding player 4 tightly, player 5 can just pass out to player 2 for a 3-point shot. So this is why this version of it is very deadly is because even though the other version of the overload is still a pretty good overload you're now making three players guard four and this is why this version of this offense works so well now this next play is one you've probably heard before as well and that is the horns offense now the horns offense if you don't already know is when you've got let's say kyle lowry or steph curry dribbling the ball up the court and you'll see them go like this this is generally the sign for horns now i as a coach have ran horns a few times with my teams and with my teams i would generally have five plays per set again this would be at the high school age so you're generally able to get away with running 10 to 20 plays for a team and them knowing and understanding those plays again there are circumstances where you might not want to run that many plays at a high school level but generally speaking if you're at the mediocre range or higher you can get away with 
10 to 20 plays. And with having five different horn sets, I always like to name my plays what they are and then a number. So for example, horns one is a screen and roll in the horns formation. I'll show you that play, it's really simple. So we have the point guard up top, Horns has the two big players in the high post and the guards down low. Now with a Horns 1 with my team, anytime there's a 1 involved, that means that it's just a simple screen and roll. Player 1 comes off of that screen and roll, player 4 rolls towards the basket, and now if you want without because obviously these two players are doing nothing and I always like to get other players involved we can have player five screen away for player two player two is popping up so now player one has three different actually technically four different options he has player four rolling towards the basket he has his own three-point shot or mid-range shot he has player two popping up for a three-point shot he also has player three in the corner where if his defender sees that screen and roll and he starts sagging down to protect the net because in a help defense if you really do not want any baskets in the paint they're going to be sagging off and playing what's called help defense which now leaves his man open for a three-point shot so with this simple screen and roll play we have four different options and then later on in the season we can add even more options where now player five after that screen he's going to be moving over setting a screen for player four if player two is somewhat open you can pass to player two or he can set a screen for player one one or the other player four is going to be popping out and player one can take that uh, take can take that pass over to player four and player four can take that shot now again, this is a simple play that we've now became uh, now what's now become a little bit more complicated, but if you have a team that's able to think after maybe maybe a month to a month and a half, this simple play can get more advanced and now you're adding on additional plays where they can read the defense and react to what's happening. And that would be the same, that play calling technique is the same whether it be for a 5 out, for a horns, for a 4 high, or whatever, 4 high, that's how I like to call it, 4 high, 4 high, and 4 high 1. So if we're calling, if we're coming down the course saying 4 high, and then he's calling out later on 2, then we're doing 4 high 2 whatever that may be that year. But generally speaking, if we're going 5-1, five, 5-1, one, five, one, or 4 high, and then later on 1, that means it's just a simple screen and roll. That's all we're doing, and then we can build off of it. So that's my play calling technique, and I teach that to my players as well. Now, in this next play, we have the 4 high, or what I like to call 4 high and 4 low. I'm going to explain these plays to you as well. Again, really good against man-to-man -man defenses. And generally speaking, uh, you might not want to run these ones against a zone, but the four high is really good against a 2-3 type of zone defense. Let's get down to the clipboard. Let's, I'll show you what these plays are. So in a four high, we're going to have our point guard up top and four players at the free throw line extended. Now in a four low situation, we'll have four players roughly around the block and we'll be a one four again. Now, what we're going to be doing here is having at first a four high and let's say we'll set up a two three zone defense or a three two let's set up a three two i haven't done a three two yet in these videos so here's a three two zone defense three players up top two players in the bottom so we're going to be having players two and three they're going to be pretty well guarding the passing lanes whether it be for those two players or those two players and player four and five are going to be down low and this is going to be single coverage up top player one on defense is going to be trying to force player one blue on offense towards the sidelines and into the trapping locations so what we're going to be doing here is something that's very simple we're going to be having players four and five 
screening out for those wing high wing players, player one is going to be then deciding which direction he's going to want to go. Let's say he wants to go in towards this right direction. That's going to be bringing player two up. We're going to have player two blue move down towards this corner. Now, what I want to see happen is a skip pass over to player two. That's going to be bringing out player four red because, of course, player two and one are guarding player one blue, but also player two is caught up on player five screen. When player four pops out, that's going to bring, bring player five red over and player five blue is going to be rolling towards the basket. Meanwhile, player three is already in this corner after using player four as a screen. We're going to be having player 2 pass to player 5, and of course he could hit that mid-range shot or go in for that layup if player 5 was not playing help defense, but we can have a kick-out pass, or what we like to call a hammer pass, out towards that corner 3 player. Player 4 is going to be then rolling off of that screen, so that if player 3 has an open shot he can take it, but also... That's going to be bringing player 3 down to try and defend that shot. And now, again, going into reading and reacting to a defense, we're going to be having player 3 pass over to player 4 for the 3-point shot. Now, those are some of the most common basketball offenses that you'll probably come up against and some simple plays that you can run with those, those offensive sets that you'll probably come up against so in case you want to run them as well. I also gave you my strategy on how you can call plays. 5-1 is a 5-out screen and roll. Horns 1 is a horn screen and roll. 4-high uh, 1 is a 4-high screen and roll. Very simple. When you start getting into those... Uh, let's say a horns two or a horns five or a horns three, there's different plays. You can just kind of slot them in, uh, draw them up or make a video like I just did today, share them with your team. Or if you find plays on my YouTube channel that you like, say to your players, hey, here's a link to the video and play number four we're running this year. And you can just kind of set them out and uh, send them out to your players. And though that's how you can do it. That's how a lot of coaches do it. And that's how I do it myself. Anyways, I hope that you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, hit that like button to subscribe. I hope that this video has brought you some value. And I'll see you guys again later on today for the second video of the day.